Hello and thank you for pressing play. Welcome to A Beer With Bear or Any Other Beverage. This is episode 76 and our guest for this week is Spike Marble. Spike is a photographer, graphic designer, the singer and guitar player for his band The Hula Girls, and the host of Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. George and I had the pleasure of visiting Spike at the Breezeway, which is his home bar and a set of his YouTube show. Over some cold drinks and surrounded by amazing tiki art and vintage decor, we had the opportunity to talk to Spike about his journey into this subculture. George was really in his element in this episode, as we talk to Spike about tiki history, music, film, and of course, some of his go-to cocktails and bar recommendations. Be sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel, Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. There will be a link in the episode description. Beer with Bear is available to listen to where podcasts are heard. Spotify, iTunes, just to name a few, Lipson and SoundCloud.com. If you like what you hear, please support the show and artists to come on by hitting subscribe, leave a rating, write in a positive review, and tell your friends. While you're at it, don't forget to like us on Facebook at Beer with Bear Pod, Twitter at Beer with Bear, and Instagram at Beer with Bear Podcast. That's right, due to some technical issues, we are no longer using the Beer with Bear Pod handle. The account's still up. But you want to follow us at Beer with Bear Podcast. There with the other socials, you'll find pictures, updates for upcoming episodes, and it's also the best way to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Theme music by Chris Helking. Graphic design by Jeremy Fletcher. Mixing and post-production by Ryan Miles. Thank you very much and enjoy. Okay, so we are going. I kind of like how when I listen in the background, I can hear the waterfall. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, this is a very, for those listening, I can't uh, even describe where I'm at right now because it's, um, I feel like I'm on a, a, a TV set, <laughs> like, a, like a movie set, maybe Hawaii Five O or. You know when movies started in Hawaii? Death Wish. Remember that? Oh, Death yeah. Wish? They were on the beach. <laughs> they were on the beach in Hawaii. They were having their, they just got married, I guess. Yeah. And, and then they're. And then they the Beth, killing. Oh, the Death Wish is that the one with the the guy who Charles uh, Bronson? Yeah, he's taking revenge because yeah, uh, Jeff yeah. Goldblum uh, murdered and raped his wife. Yeah. yeah. Oh they, my God. They come back from vacation or whatever, and then they, his wife and, and daughter get assaulted. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then Bronson loses it. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I was so surprised as a kid because I always known him as the older actor. When he took his shirt off in that movie, I'm like, he's <laughs> jacked. Yeah. Totally. Had, you know what? I did see that, and I had to look up how old he was. He was like 50, 52, I think. No and I was way. Like, He's jacked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he looked. He looked. He had like a body like a Marvel actor, you know, yeah. like a Marvel super. Yeah. yeah. We know what their their, their regimen is. You know, they have a personal trainer, as they say. But uh-huh. yeah, he that's without juice. Well, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's awesome. It's probably like nineteen seventy eight or something. Yeah. Did you ever watch uh, that cartoon, uh, Agent Elvis? No. Okay, so the first... Gail Watson was talking about doing a, a theme for that. So the first episode, um, they're at the Trader Vic's in Beverly Hills. Man. <laughs> it's a good... I saw the place. I was like, that's awesome. I'm, I miss Trader Vic's in Beverly Hills so much. Yeah. Okay, Trader Vic's in Beverly Hills. Okay, so before we get, go on to Trader Vic's... Yeah. Um, we are with Spike. What name are we going by with you? Spike Breeze, yeah. Breezy? What are we, cocktails? Spike what are we doing? Breezy. What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> Don't call me just, that. Just call him Spike. <laughs> yeah, Spike Marble. Okay. Spike I play guitar Breeze. in a band called the Hula Girls and uh, host a show on YouTube called Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. Uh, see, I, I went short. Breezeway, Breezy. I don't yeah. Know. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm a photographer, a pin photographer and videographer and a graphic designer and... Oh, bunch of stuff. See, a couple of things I didn't know. Yeah, because I, I find myself at older age that I'm very into um, <laughs> I'm older age. Well, yeah, because I was you know I was like, put it this way when I was younger in a psychobilly, my room was uh, all flyers, black paint, po- oh, right. posters with no frames, you mm. know. And George is always kind of like, oh, you need to get some frames. I'm like, nah, man, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. And now I find myself looking at frames, looking at like I said, aesthetic. This place, I'm looking at the lighting. I'm looking at. I really appreciate more. Oh, uh, yeah. 
the design Describe of this things. place. It's amazing. Yeah, so we're in his, um, so he also has a YouTube channel, as you mentioned, and this is actually the set of his YouTube channel, but um, a, a set slash personal home bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's literally the breezeway between my kitchen and my garage. And uh, yeah, it's where I shoot all my videos and uh, cocktail tutorials and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and to the point where you say with old age, I came home the other day, and I, well, I, I live next to George, so I came, I, I sound weird, I came home and George saw me, no, no, we're not like that, no, we, <laughs> we don't live, live next to each other. we don't live together, we live next to each other, yeah. and he's like, what's in your hand, and it was, uh, it was Home Depot, those little pamphlets for paint, I'm like, oh, I'm looking oh, at, that's that. right, that was so weird, <laughs> that yeah. judgmental tone you had, too, it's like, you're, what are you looking at paint samples, <laughs> like, like, and I opened up, he's like, oh, look at that gray, he started, <laughs> we started looking at it together, that's, yeah, it's nice, yeah, so, <laughs> And like I said, I, I, I found under, um, not even a rabbit hole, I just started enjoying your channel, Nor, because uh, George introduced me to that, because for those who listen to this show for a while, know that George is very into tiki culture, mm -hmm. very into, uh, um, he built his own, he, I call it a tiki bar, he calls it's it a, a tiki hut. It's a hut, it's a little shack. Yeah, it's a tiki but hut. So. I don't want to, I'm here at the breezeway, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm like, tell him about your bar, he's like, no, he'll laugh at me. <laughs> oh, no. I think, so the video that, that we just posted on my YouTube channel was was the beginning of the whole build, where it was just from bare bones to something. And, um, and back then, I thought it was the m most incredible thing in the world. Now, yeah. that bar compared to this was nothing. But I always think that, like, whoever wants, if you want to start your own bar, everybody's got to start somewhere. And that's like... <laughs> no, you're... No, no, you no. Good? I'm, no, I'm just, I'm just checking all my oh, stuff. Okay. Keep going, keep um, going. Yeah, it, like everybody's got to start somewhere, and uh, and I and I bet you. Keep going, jackass. No, George. This guy's clumsy. I'm telling you. Well, didn't it help too? Freaking George called me this morning. So I had a dream that you, you forgot to uh, press record. So I was checking record right <laughs> now. I've done that before. Yeah. Where you go? Uh, we need to do that over again. Yeah. And so. Like, what do you mean? Like, yes, all of it. You're recording, right? Yeah, uh, no, we're recording for sure. I was just like, I, I left my drink on the other side of the bar. So I was hoping to like sneak over there while he tells a story. You cover you just, me, watch, but it didn't work out that way. But it's okay because we're going back to you're making it. all this noise. No, I was, I guess I, was, I wasn't, I guess I wasn't very sneaky, was I? Uh, all right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. However, like I said, it's a podcast. Um, luckily, it's um, it's not on your show, so it's not as it's not as um, well produced. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but but I think that like anybody who's starting to build a bar, like there are places where you start and you just keep collecting, and eventually you get to a point where you're like pretty satisfied with with, with what you've collected. Because yeah. I started with you know almost nothing. I carved my own tiki's because I couldn't afford to buy big tiki's, so I literally. You know, you figure it out. But this thing is just a fortune. You're just right. <laughs> it it kind of wasn't. I, you know, oh, uh, the thing I almost top, tipped over right now. <laughs> for for a Leroy Schmaltz card. Yeah, Leroy TV, Schmaltz. Yeah. Uh, uh, for those at home listening, what are we looking at? What are you describing? So it's a big um, Marques and Tiki. It's kind of like the, I guess the trademark Tiki of the Breezeway. But I got it from another collector, and I think I paid six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars. Which might sound like a lot. No, well, I saw at the. Did you see the auction? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. That probably go for like fifteen thousand, maybe. Probably fifteen thousand. Yeah, <laughs> ten to fifteen thousand. Yeah. So. so that's and that's an amazing piece right there. Well, everything's amazing here. Oh, but, thanks. Yeah, yeah. A lot of collection. That uh, yeah. collecting. That's. How that's many it. years you would say it took you to kind of put this all together? Well, I, I don't know. I've been collecting since I was in college, so um, you know, late nineties till now and then um you know it's really been 10 years of the breezeway the literal breezeway uh 2012 i guess we we built that oh so since the 90s um uh, i was gonna ask you about that too because i didn't really um <laughs> 2012 yeah. no 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 you said no well you was talking about uh no i was referring to the collecting oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you <laughs> Are you paying attention? No, I am paying attention, but I was going to spin it back. I, I'm a host. I know what I'm doing. It's like Wayne, <laughs> Wayne's World where they're like talking to him. And he's like checking. No. Um, so oh, basically. Wayne's World. They well, just saw the one with uh, Aerosmith on. That was a good second one. Yeah. Oh, that's right. If you build it, he will come or they yeah, will come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And has a naked Indian. Yeah. I don't know if those movies hold up. I, it's been a while. I, I'm, I'm excited to see the first one again. Old man fashioning a canoe out of uh, out of a log. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, it's a suck cut. <laughs> yeah, the suck cut. Um, it sure does suck. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mike Myers was definitely, uh, in the 90s, a much different person compared to later, later in his career. Mm-hmm. With a love guru. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what was that one? Uh, killed him. I married an axe murderer. Remember oh, that, that was a good one. Married an axe murderer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phil yeah. Hartman. Yeah. yeah. I love one. that movie. Yeah. It only had one song to the whole movie, oh, but it was still good. Oh, that's right. That song drove me crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. The... Was that the one? Yeah, it was the one. <laughs> oh, right. But he was like a beat poet. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The... She makes me horny on Saturday mornings. <laughs> Speak... So speaking of beat poetry... There was a band called the Swamp Zombies. Did you ever hear about them? Uh, no. So in the, I guess, mid-90s or whatever, uh, there was a band called the Swamp Zombies that was the precursor to the Tiki Tones. And their idea was a 60s beat kind of hippie, not hippie, but like yeah. beatnik, beatnik poet band. Yeah. And so uh, it was Shag from yeah, the artist Shag. That's how I imagined, because every time I imagine Shag... I imagine like a beatnik style. Totally. Yeah. And uh, and an upright bass player playing a big purple upright bass with he, a shag painting on the back. Did he make the Fez hats a tiki thing? Like shag? I don't... Did, um, they, were they a thing before that? You know, he... Actually, he might have been the connection. Yeah, right? Yeah. Now that now that you're mentioning it, he might have been the one that, that like put it together because it was the idea of like Shriners going on conven- going like to conventions and then hanging out at places like Trader Vic's and yeah. like drinking after the convention. Cuz I've looked I've searched for pictures of old pictures of people with fez hats at yeah. tiki bars. I can't find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like Shag might have done it. He might have been the one, yeah. Yeah. I don't know who Shag is. Can you fill oh, me really? in? Oh, the artist? <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, like I said this is uh, really George's wheelhouse here when it comes to this. Uh Yeah, he um I don't know. I guess you would say mid-century artist but he he did a lot of um poster art for bands like the cadillac tramps in the early days oh, okay. and stuff like that but yeah. but he's more known for like kind of two-dimensional paintings of tiki bars and stuff um wildly famous it's wildly <laughs> well, famous. yeah but anyway so so to tie it back to like the be it poetry thing um that upright bass would show up at my house because Shag's bass player was my babysitter in like 1993. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it's wild stuff. And there was like a big tiki painted on the back of the bass. And this is like, this is an era where people had no clue what tiki was. No. It had fallen out of popularity. It was like the, the 70s and 80s and 90s had tiki just was like. Gone. Which is exactly the direction I was going to when I mentioned the 90s and you both looked at me like I was crazy was, <laughs> when did Tiki make its big comeback? Because I wasn't aware of this whole culture until, because when I first got into, like I said, I was a punk psychobilly kid. Mm-hmm. I was hanging out with a friend from out of town and uh, I would go with him to places and um, all of his friends, this is like 2008 or nine. Okay. all of his friends had their own Tiki bars. They had downgraded stuff like this and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Um but I, like I said, it wasn't really on my radar until, like I said, in the 2000s. When would you say it started making a um, what it is now and it's obviously very big? Like Because you say you've been collecting since the 90s and it was kind of dry. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about your journey from how to collect since things were kind of hard to find and then uh, how it grew since then. Okay. Well, so so I didn't really have any idea about, about Tiki until I went to college. And then I had a graphic design professor who... Um, he had a meeting at his house one time, like a, like a critique. Like we brought our projects in and we critiqued it at his house, but his house was like, it was like Pee Wee's Playhouse, like tuck and roll upholstered wraparound bar around the kitchen and like refrigerators lined up against the wall, like 1950s refrigerators with tiki mugs inside. And I, I was, I picked one of those tiki mugs up and I went and like, well, and, the, and in his garden, his garden was filled with bowling balls. Oh, wow. It was like Very the thrift stores guy. in Stockton at the time were just like littered with incredible stuff. So anyway, um, I picked up one of these tiki mugs and I, I looked at it and it said um, the Islander. And I go, well, okay, so why does it say <laughs> – it's, it's crazy to even think that, yeah. that I'd, I'd be confused at why it said the Islander. But if you have no point of reference before, like the book of tiki hadn't come out yet or anything um, – I, he goes, well, these were souvenirs. You'd go to a restaurant, and it was usually uh, like a Hawaiian restaurant or kind of an Asian restaurant, and uh, you could buy the mug because it would come, you'd, you'd get a cocktail served in it, and you could pay a little extra to keep the mug. 
Oh, I and see. so that there was a name on there, mm. and it was the Islander of Stockton. And so I started going to the thrift stores after that, and it was like it was like picking, it was like picking a a tiki tree that just kept repopulating itself. I was getting mugs for a quarter, for fifty cents. Like I would I would go to the register with my arms full of like fifties <laughs> and sixties stuff. This is before eBay. Yeah, my so mind's nobody... blown because I would love to get some of those cups, but it's uh, it's it's my it sounds range. like something yeah. you dream about, like. He's like, oh, I just picked up all these mugs for 50 cents. And you wake up like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I would, but I would go to sleep and I would dream about going to the, thr- the thrift stores because I was there so often and I didn't have much money. But if everything's 50 cents or a dollar, like you don't need a, a, yeah. a lot of money, you know? Now Tiki mugs are $100, $200, yeah. $500 now. Oh, I've seen outrageous <clears throat> prices for these. Yeah. Just, yeah, it's actually one of the ways I found your channel too is because I started following those mug channels. And I know during the pandemic too, uh, I can't think of the name right now. Maybe I'll think of it later. Mm-hmm. But they would have live streams, and the the lady would be there with the tiki thing, and they would yeah. talk about mugs, and have artists come on and sculptors. And I was like, oh, this is awesome because I'm into action figures too. So I love the uh, the art of it, the sculpting of it. And then, um, you know, you look at hashtags, and I see your page. George mm-hmm. mentioned you, and then I see the women. So I'm like, okay, and I see the, the photography. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm subscribe. Right, <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah. So um, so it went from. Collecting those mugs and stuff to uh, the Book of Tiki coming out in like the late 90s, uh, Sven Kirsten or early 2000s, Sven Kirsten put out a book called The Book of Tiki that really organized all of yeah. kind of the thoughts behind this thing that happened. So the Book of Tiki came out. I was still in college and then eBay happened. So I was collecting all these mugs and stuff. eBay happened and all of a sudden the thrift stores went dry like uh. overnight. It was Wild, really. All of a sudden, all these people realized that there was stuff that was valuable in these thrift, these thrift stores. So it went viral before going viral. You know, Dude. I do remember yeah. when the thrift stores people would go to the thrift stores and pick. I was like, you don't live around here. Yeah. Like, like, because I, I I remember my first tiki was when I was nineteen. I paid five dollars for mm-hmm. it. It was from nineteen fifty nine. Wow. And then I paid five dollars for it, and and then I started seeing these people. They don't live around the area. I could yeah. tell, you know, because like we live kind of in the hood, <laughs> so yeah. you could tell. Like, and they're picking things out. I'm like, uh-huh. okay, they're selling it for you know eBay or different. You probably shops. saw Spike in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Here. They're picking the tree. Yeah, yeah, totally. Well, don't places. I don't know if this is a thing. When places go there and pick like stuff and pay and then resell it for a much higher price totally. on eBay or their shop. Yeah, totally. So, um, so then shortly after that, like I, I graduated college and then I came, so, so, uh, so it was, it was my graphic design professor that basically told me or explained what Tiki was. And then almost immediately I was like in love with the whole thing. So I graduate college and then, um, I start participating in uh, Tiki central, which was like an online message board thing. And, um, I started meeting some people and, uh, I like to say that I discovered Sam seafood in sunset beach. Um, Sam, Su- Sam Seafood ended up becoming Don the Beachcomber uh, down there in Huntington Sunset Beach. And uh, the people on Tiki Central thought it was so funny that I had discovered this place that they all <laughs> already knew about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're like the new guy, the new yeah, excited exactly. guy. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's like when you're in a, you just, oh, have you heard of this band? We're like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, we have. Yeah, we, we've fully heard of the band. Um, but it was like 2001 or 2002, something like that. And then so I started like going to these events where I was going to, Trader Vic's Beverly Hills and I was going to Sam Seafood and um, I think that that's that's when I started getting involved I went to TQ Oasis 3 I think the third one they're at what 20 something now yeah I forget it um, but so anyway I'd like to answer your question about when did Tiki like blow up yeah. and become more I don't want to call it mainstream yet but um, I guess more known yeah Man, a bigger I, subculture I guess yeah right I, I think that people that were into, you know, there's photos of like the cramps at Bahuka or yeah. at Damon's, like Lux and Ivy. Oh yeah, they. I saw a picture, a video of their home. I'm just like, see a lot of for cool. sure. Because yeah. I would see it more with the rockabilly people. The yeah. rockabilly people, like I mentioned, the 2000s, late 2000s. I started seeing the tiki thing grow with them, and then I'm like, I, th- I think even through the 90s, um, the rockabilly people were just in, immersed in in like 50s culture. So yeah. 50s culture tiki goes along with that. Um, you know, even Brian Setzer back in the mid nineties with the orchestra was flanked on both sides of the stage with, with big carved tiki's. 
Yeah, it has such a rich history too that I was not aware of until, like I said, George is you know telling me about it and then uh, following your channel. Yeah, totally. and he said the, the book of Tiki. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about that, the author and yes, yeah, Sven Kirsten. Um, he's I think he's is he Swedish, Danish, Danish, Swedish. I thought he was German, but I'm not sure. Oh yeah, he's German. <laughs> He's like a buddy of mine. I don't. Yeah, I have no idea. Um, yeah, he he was the one who really put it all down on paper before anybody else. Just like Beach Bum Barry I, was the first guy to really. I found the out cocktails. about him. Uh, Atomic Ranch magazine. Yeah, Do you yeah, remember that magazine? Totally. He had an article, and then in like two thousand seven or eight, and he just mm -hmm. described his favorite places. That's, I I missed the book of Tiki, but I saw yeah. that, and I went through all that. I, I would say that it was Tiki Oasis that really started making people aware of tiki mm -hmm. you know what i mean more so than any other festival i think i think it was tiki oasis and then like the proliferation of of companies like tiki farm who started producing mugs again yeah um but i i don't know if there's a year that i could pin it down to because mm. you know how sometimes uh things pick up too um I, as i've falls into mainstream whether it be a band or sometimes a film or something yeah, yeah I, I wonder like well because i like i would say that that movies like swingers and the mask yeah. like reignited the swing thing yeah what was that remember uh, mad men when mad men came out everything was like art deco all of a sudden what was that, that tiki bar they went into uh in swingers the bamboo lounge or something in swingers with the, with the cover band or the one where they we no the that was the dresden what? no no when they, they would meet up with the waitresses in vegas Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. They say, oh, I, meet me up at the Bamboo something. And, yeah, I think that was f fictional. Maybe. Yeah, it was fictional. Yeah. yeah. But they say it like oh, that. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. I, and then I they go to Drenston's, and then they go to, uh, what's that other one? That they, the Big Bad Voodoo Daddy was on. You know, oh, I, yeah. I didn't know any the, of those the places. The Derby. The Derby, yeah. yeah. That place is gone. Yeah, and like members of my band used to play there and stuff, like all the time. I remember going to the Derby and going getting one of those booths. I'm like, yeah. I feel like the swingers, right? Really? Like, yeah. How old are you? I can't wait. We're the same. You, really? You yeah. were old enough to go to that? Yeah. Wow. I missed that. Yeah. Totally missed it, that. It was like a year or two before it closed. Right. right there. Yeah. So you were in there for that, like that, sh that short window. Yeah, because I went there, but there was like an acoustic band playing. Right. It was really, you know, not the not as it was back then. <laughs> yeah. Question: Did you say any uh, any of the cheesy lines? You know, your money, baby. You're like yeah, a big bear. Of course. <laughs> yeah. You had a couple cocktails Weren't in you. Were you there? Did you no, really? oh, I don't. Okay. You know, if I was, I don't remember it. Especially well, back then. <laughs> it's so, then the we way went, I used to drink. Right. <laughs> we went there and then went to the Lucky Bar. I, it's I not there anymore asked, either. I probably would have got us kicked out. <laughs> oh, the Lucky Bar. Yeah. Yeah. That was that uh, Asian kind of theme. Yeah. Nice that place club. was so great. Was oh, Good cool. Luck Bar. Good Luck Bar. There you go. That's what it's called. Man, I miss that place. That place was great. But it was. In the early days, you would you would be stoked just to go to a bar and drink a cocktail out of a tiki mug. You'd be stoked to go to an old place that was an authentic tiki bar that served crappy drinks. Yeah. Because you just wanted to be in that environment. Now I think it's a little bit different. I think that people are more knowledgeable about cocktails. They're, they don't want to just go to a bar and get crappy drinks. I think people... I think we've progressed beyond being enamored by the idea of just discovering tiki because back then it was like every day something else was being found like a discovery about this this primitive modern culture that had like popped up for a little bit through the 50s and 60s 40s 50s and 60s and then just went away again i remember the, when frank's uh frankie's tiki room in uh, vegas opened up i was just like no this is a spot yeah i went there and 09, I think. 09, 08. Yeah, I forget what year they opened. I think they opened in 08 or 09. Or okay. 08, I think. So, um, a lot of it's... I remember watching one of your videos talk about a lot of Hawaiian mythology and stuff. Where mm -hmm. did it... Um, in, the in the 50s and 60s, where did it pop up? Was it a California thing, an East Coast thing? What was like some of the main uh, hubs for this uh, culture? Yeah, Tiki started in Hollywood in uh, 1940... Uh, oof. 39 or so? Um, a guy named... Don Beach like opened this bar called Don the Beachcomber, and he had Hollywood set decorators come in and decorate it tropical. Yeah, and um, 
Makes sense too. Think about that. Remember the surf movie craze in the sixties? Yeah, but I oh, mean, this we're, is the thirties. Yeah, thirties, yeah. right after uh, Prohibition. Oh yeah, no, totally. nice. And uh, I think it was probably an answer to Prohibition, and also an answer to all of the GIs coming home from the war oh. and going, "Dude, I, I war sucked, yeah. but I did like the palm trees." You know and the what chicks. I saw is place in TJ, and that opened in nineteen twenty during the Prohibition. It was yeah. called the uh, Who Songs? No, it was called the. Uh, the Honolulu Cafe, or okay, and a lot of GIs used to go there, yeah, and yeah. used to have like tequila drinks. They didn't have you know down the beachcomber stuff, but right. they had hula dancers. Yeah, back in the twenties in TJ. Okay, and I, was, I mean it was around, you yeah. Know? And I, I think I said I think I said thirty nine. It was it's uh, thirty four, I believe 34, they opened, or, yeah. or thirty three. They yeah. opened, yeah. No, because I was thinking about the fifties and sixties, and then yeah, the thirties too. Yeah. My God. And then Trader Vic opened uh, a place in uh, Oakland in nineteen forty in the. 40s, which was Trader Vic's, created the Mai Tai in 1944. Mai became tai. like the most popular cocktail, you know, almost of all time. Or can at least you tell me about time. the Mai Tai? Because like I told you, I'm, I'm like, I, I'll say it again. I'm so new to this world. I just knew Tiki has a Tiki bar, Hawaiian shirts, yeah. flavorful drinks, you know. But um, I was watching your video talking about you're you trying Mai Tais in different parts of the sta- um, country. Oh, right. And then you're like, you're judging them. Like, okay, this Mai Tai <laughs> was good. I, I, you, you, you didn't want to offend a bartender and dumped it out. Like, oh, yeah. Well, I think we were in Nashville or something. Yeah. So a uh, Mai Tai, give me, give me uh, what's, the, what's the main, re- what, what do I look for if I'm getting a Mai Tai? What, what is some, um, and no pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So, okay. So I have like two lines of thinking for the Mai Tai. I think there is the Mai Tai which is the 1944 Trader Vic's Mai Tai, which is uh, lime juice, orange curacao, or jot syrup, simple syrup, and uh, dark Jamaican rum. Uh, and then there's any other kind of Mai Tai that if you put like a word before the word Mai Tai, <laughs> go ahead, go crazy. Uh, you can yeah. make whatever stupid drink you want. But the 1944 Mai Tai is an, is an elegant... Uh, de- uh, what am I trying to say? Um, it has depth to it. It is it is a layered cocktail. Like all the different flavors. Yeah, right? as you consume it, there are different layers to the things you're tasting. It's complex, but it's also very simple. So you're pretty well. Well, I, from what I see, you're pretty well known. You think bartenders bartenders get a little bit nervous when you see you walk in? They're like, ah, shit! Like, a, <laughs> <laughs> step up your game, boys. I don't. I don't think people know me enough. Oh, okay. for that. <laughs> well, let's change that. Let's work oh, on that. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I think there are certain bars. You, you for You would sure. think like the zombie, the mai tais back then. They're really, they're good drinks, but they're a little stiff, you know. So I'm thinking yeah. it's it's the times also. Yeah. It's the harder times. So everyone wanted a stiff drink. You mentioned GIs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And, and well, I want to go on this too because you mentioned the history of the 1930s and mm-hmm. um, all that. The recipes too for these drinks are really old too as well. Some are lost, some are um, found. I, I think you mentioned that they found old recipes. Oh, uh, I was yeah. talking about beach bum berries. Yeah, the zombie. Yeah. 1934 zombie beach bum berry rediscovered this recipe by doing all kinds of research and talking to old bartenders from back in the era. And uh, the the reason that it was so complicated is because Don the Beachcomber used to code his bottles. So if you'd look at a recipe book, it would say uh, three ounces of bottle A or whatever. And you'd go, what the hell's bottle A? And by deductive reasoning, they were able to figure out what that stuff was. So I think the TKT still does that, huh? They don't know. Some of the bartenders don't know actual recipes, right? Well, it's a family bar. Yeah. So there, there's there's two family members and a, I'd say new guy, but it's probably been 10 years now. <laughs> two new guys, I think. There's two new Oh, bars. really? Yeah. Okay. I haven't been there for yeah. a while. So Yeah. Yeah. And um, but but they will not tell. They will not divulge the recipe for the raise mistake. Yeah. So yeah, they do try to keep <laughs> some of that stuff secret because there's a reason to go to that bar. Oh, I see. If you can't get that drink anywhere else. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you get when you go there. <laughs> yeah, totally. And then and you because like I mentioned, you're, you're really um, well. You know your history very well when it comes to this culture. When it comes to drinks too, you did a lot of research on that as well for your own bar. Mm-hmm. So you you. Uh, off the top of your head, how many things? How many drinks do you think you can make yourself? Just off the top of your head, like if say I don't, you know. Oh, like if if you were like make me a bunch of drinks. Yeah, no. If I would <laughs> say uh, I, I hire you as a bartender, yeah. what do you suggest? Like, what are some of your uh, I guess your specialties? I would say. I mean, I, I think that I can I could probably make like six or seven cocktails just from memory. A lot of the tiki cocktails are really complex. Like, yeah. you know, the, the zombie has I think eight or nine ingredients, something like that. So. 
you know, some people can memorize those. I mean, if you're a bartender and you're doing it all the time, like it's probably easy to memorize 30 cocktails, but for somebody who does a weekly show yeah, yeah. and then, you know, makes <laughs> drinks here and there, it's like, I know the Mai Tai, I know the daiquiri, I know, uh, you know, I, I can make a, I think a, a really good margarita, uh, which is not a tiki cocktail, but it's a delicious cocktail. Yeah. Um, and then what else? I don't know. I've got a couple of cocktails I've come up with myself that, that are pretty good and yeah. You don't want to play a song from this band? Absolutely, absolutely. I want to fast forward that. So, um, so I got into some of the history. Like mm-hmm. I said, I'm going to because before we started here, um, we talked a lot. Like we talked a lot. I'm like, oh my god, I got to record this while we're setting oh, yeah. up. First thing was first is that we actually brought you a gift. George brought you uh, sand from the set of uh, Gilligan's Island. That was like blew my mind. <laughs> I can't believe. I can't even. I can't even believe I found that when they when the guy was like. Wait, this is sand. Yeah, it was in her house. It was in Don Wells' house, Marianne's house. Dude, I people often bring me <laughs> things like tiki mugs, and I go, "Ah, oh, thanks." Yeah. And it's usually, you know, because people don't really know the the cool stuff or whatever. The fact that you brought me sand from the set of Gilligan's <laughs> Island from Don Wells' collection, yeah, it, has blown my mind. <laughs> I that what an incredible gift. So thank you so uh, much. No problem. And then. Um, <laughs> We, uh, George also, like I said, this is totally George's wheelhouse. You yeah. mentioned the beer you uh, wanted, right? I'm like, George, what is this? So he went to a couple of places to uh, find this. What, what kind of beer are we drinking today? It's, it's a stone. Buena Vesa. Buena Vesa. It's like a lime and salt lager. And it's a good can too because I can actually post that on social media and not get dinged. Oh, really? Because usually, yeah, if I put my stuff on social media with like uh, with the beer on there, they, um, I have to block it out because... Uh, so, um, oh, you have yeah, to put explicit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Put, yeah. yeah. It, um, when it comes to social media, like if I want to put an ad on it, yeah. you have to censor. You can't have smoking or, or alcohol on there. Oh, really? Or, or age restricts you. Okay. I mean, so you're talking about like Spike like. as a <laughs> cocktail show. <laughs> cocktail show. Yeah. <laughs> I know, totally. <laughs> yeah. I get hassled by people because I usually drink Coors Light. And people oh. are like, "Oh, you don't really like beer," and "Oh, you you know, aren't you a tiki cocktail guy?" And I'm like, "Dude, if I'm playing guitar, I need something that I can drink like eight of and still be, like, you know, relatively." Most of the time, I know some bartenders. Most of the time, if you talk to a bartender, they make the best drinks. Yeah, but there's like a whiskey shot in a in a in a simple drink. Yeah, you know, totally. a simple beer. Yeah, that's what they go for. Interesting. And when I, okay, so he brought you the gift. When as soon as I walked into your house, like I, I knew you for like two seconds. I'm like, well, this is exactly what I expected. Just oh, come really? into your living room and then I use your bathroom. I'm like, even this fucking bathroom is cool. <laughs> his sink, <laughs> George, he uses bathroom. Look at his sink. It's like, what are those, what are those ducks? Or, uh, what it's is, like a swan. It's like a swan. Oh, is that the swan? Is it, is it, oh, okay. The swan handle. Those, oh, those are, yeah, I like yeah. those. It's like puking out the water. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, man. I went to, uh, a restaurant in San Diego and they had that and I was like oh this is pretty cool yeah because <laughs> we're very cool guys right yeah. so we talk about um, cool things like uh, bathroom faucets I'm like we're talking about this is too minimalistic yeah. it looks cool now but bathroom what about five swan. years <laughs> yeah so we, like I told you we, we're looking at paint we're looking at uh, you know um, pretty paint much chips yeah. yeah yeah bathroom setups <laughs> and it's because uh, he, uh, he's a homeowner and he sent me some of his ideas and stuff yeah so um but I want to fast forward because you mentioned doing a weekly show. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned you're uh, a, you have a weekly show and you're also a musician. I want to start off by playing um, a song from your band, "Curse of the Tiki" by the Hula Girls. <laughs> Curse of the Tiki 
want to say Spike and the Hula Girls, but <laughs> don't say Breezy. No, no, no. <laughs> I was gonna cut that out, but you brought it back, so I'm leaving it in now. You know the reason why people do like Chris Isaac and Silvertone or Brian Setzer and the Nash Villains, so they get paid more. No, it's the music the, rights that everybody knows that they're it's their band. It's a control thing. It's like uh, I've for a minute I thought about because my band was kind of like flopping around like people were coming in and out and i was stuff. thinking that for lineup changes and for yeah for like control i think i think buzz from hot rod lincoln did that too buzz campbell and hot rod lincoln or something so yeah i think um for a second i thought about Sp spike and the hula girls but i don't know hot yeah well, i remember well, the last time i saw hot rug in the viva las vegas it was like a whole new lineup i was like this is Hot Raw Lincoln. It's kind of a bum out, right? Yeah. You go, I, like, I want the, the the band that I know. Yeah, you yeah. go there, it's like uh, one older member and a bunch of 20-year-olds yeah. playing playing the instruments. And unfortunately, that's kind of the way the Hula Girls go, too, is like, you know, it's not everybody's available for every show. Yeah. And it's, so do you just not do the show? Yeah. You know? So for the Hula Girls, um, let's talk about the direction of the band, because before we started, too, you are asking me if Revan Horton, he just considered psychobilly. I said definitely. Yeah. It's a good gateway band because it introduces a psychobilly, rockabilly, surf, like, um, what's it called? Swing, mm -hmm. country. Um, for the Hula Girls, when you made the Hula Girls, what was your, what was your, uh, um, the idea for the direction of, of, the, of the music? <laughs> so, um, so Billy Zoom used to work on my guitars, you know, from X. Yeah. And, um, and so he was working on my guitar, and my buddy was telling him, Billy was like, well, what kind of band is, is this guitar go-to or whatever? And the guy goes, uh, it's like a Hawaiian-themed rockabilly. And Billy Zoom goes, cool idea. <laughs> kind of limiting. Uh, <laughs> right, was, after I, right after I mentioned the Rev and all their... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, the Reverend Horton Heat, can, they can play with metal bands. They can play with punk rock bands. They can play yeah. with surf bands. Like, it's very... Yeah, wide open breath, you know. Uh, the Hula Girls, it's it's a little bit trickier. But we yeah. play with bands like The Addicts and The Reverend Horton Heat. And, That's <laughs> you cool. Know. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. I didn't know you played with The Addicts. Mm -hmm. That was cool. Yeah, I was watching uh, a couple of your music videos. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, a lot of those were filmed a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> the one I mentioned, too, I like, too, is the one you said where you kind of, you just, you played the instruments yourself. Oh, yeah. So that was just a solo thing I did during um, during the COVID lockdown. It was an instrumental, like a Link Ray instrumental that I kind of wrote. Okay, the Murder Queen, right? A theme for the Murder Queen, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, I want to play that, like, at the end probably. That was really cool. Like oh, I said, thanks. if you watch the video, uh, theme for the Murder Queen, um, it's really cool. And he told me it was him playing all the instruments. I'm like, oh, I like it. Yeah. You had the um, the beautiful girl dancing. You had the uh, the, the creature from the, uh, with, the, with the Blue Lagoon fucking Black mask on. <laughs> oh, wait. Black Lagoon. Is it Black Lagoon? Yeah. yeah, Black Lagoon with the mask on. I mean, not the mask on. You had his mask on. It yeah, was, yeah. It was really, uh, stylistically, it looked great. Like I said, one thing about your channel I love is... Um, it has. If you're into photography, it's got it's, it's shot really well. If you're into oh, videography, it's shot really well. If you're into women, it's got beautiful women. If you're into making drinks, interesting drinks, it's got that. If you're into history, if you're into men, he looks pretty good. Yeah, if you're into men, <laughs> I was getting there. I want to go there Thanks. first, but it might you know scare him. And, <laughs> and also too, you mentioned God. Like, I'm gonna, you, you threw me off. <laughs> now I'm thinking about men. No. Um, <laughs> And if you like, uh, what's it called? Drinks, interesting drinks, history. And one thing um, I like too is, um, um, like I would say construction, but like you're building stuff in it. You're building, oh, yeah, you're yeah. building, like, like I was watching that. It kind of reminds me of uh, those old uh, HD channel stuff, you know, where mm -hmm. people are doing home home improvement or home uh, construction or home uh, uh, custom stuff. You're building your, like, everything here. I'm pretty sure you, 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 you uh, what's it called? You, you carved. You carved. There we yeah. go. Thank you so much. What yeah, were you totally. on that one, George? <laughs> I don't know what you were saying. Yeah. Oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I um I made most of the lamps myself. I carved all the trim myself, all the, the poles and stuff that that support the breezeway I carved. I, I plan on doing more kind of tutorial things on the channel, but Yes, um, yes. I was gonna get to that too. I would love to see of more of that. Um and what is your background in that? Did you have a background in construction? Because you mentioned you mentioned everything else. You mentioned um, what's it called, G graphic design, mm -hmm. photography. Um, how did you fall into that? Because this isn't something you just learn overnight. Like I'm looking around, I'm just really impressed. Thanks. Uh, my dad was an artist and um, is an artist, and uh, so I went to college for graphic design, and then I ended up working for several different surf companies. I did all of the merch for the, the punk rock band X for the last fifteen years, something like that. As well as um, merch for uh, Jesse Dayton and who else? I don't know. 
poster design for the Reverend Horton Heat and a bunch of different yeah. stuff. So a lot of gig posters. Like every and, name you mentioned, I'm like, ooh. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. So, yeah, I don't know. A lot of different things. And um, I think the construction stuff it just comes with, you know, if you're curious, you figure out how to do things. Yeah. Yeah. And was this around 2012 when you started doing that? Or was this the 90s? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was it, when I started building the Breezeway, it was, was probably after Bamboo Ben did the first version. And then I just started working on stuff, too. But, yeah, I was watching that video, too. I think I mentioned uh, on YouTube, you, po you reposted recently. Were you going back and looking at the Bamboo Ben? And the, yeah. 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 It's interesting watch, watching that over again and seeing my ex-girlfriend and seeing Bamboo Ben and all my friends. And uh, yeah, it's funny to, to see where where you were at the time and then also like how certain things have evolved since then, you know, yeah. like places like the bar here. Mm. So yeah, I like it. I like it. That's a good friend to have bamboo. Bill. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. For those listening, who is bamboo bill? You explain in the video, but just in case they don't want to go, they don't have time to watch the video. Or I don't want to turn off the recording here. Yeah. Who is bamboo bill? Uh, ben. ben. Ben, Bamboo Ben. <laughs> I was looking at my notes. Bamboo Ben. Uh, Bamboo Ben's a, a tiki bar builder, and he's in Huntington Beach, and he's built uh, just about every tiki bar that you've been to. So, yeah. He, he worked on Clifton's. He worked on the original, or the second version of the Royal Hawaiian and Laguna Beach. Uh, Billy's at the Beach in Newport Beach. Um, there's like a new dog bar, like a dog pirate bar in Vegas. Oh, that's right. I saw He that. built Frankie's Tiki Room. Yeah. So yeah, lot and more places that I can't even the copy. Royal bar. Hawaiian, that look, place looks amazing. Looks now. insane, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my buddy Notch built that place, yeah. and um, Notch is like a car builder, so it's it's all kind of like, you know, if you're gonna build a car, so then you you should probably have good attention to detail. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. So we're talking about the band too, and I want to talk about your guitar because you mentioned that he was asking for your setup. What, 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 kind of, what kind of band is this? Oh yeah. What kind of guitar do you use? What kind of amp? What's 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 your sound? Yeah, for years I played a Gretsch uh, 6119, 1960. It's the kind of the green Gretsch, and um, I used that for years. And then COVID happened, and for whatever reason, I started playing a Jazzmaster, and, and the Jazzmaster through like a Fender, a 1954 Fender Pro. And um, kind of mixes rockabilly with surf tones. But then recently, I just got a uh, double neck Dan Electro, which is a baritone and a six string. So we recorded a song called Taboo, which is like I've never been more proud of, of a song we've recorded. Is this one of the, the newer things you mentioned coming yeah, out in April? It's, I'm so excited about this song. So I switch between necks because it yeah. goes from like six string to baritone. And then it just has a cool steel guitar thing in it. It's like kind of like a mysterious Exotica song, but it was um, it was written well. It was recorded by the Joker's in like 1963 oh, or something. Oh, yeah. that's cool. There's like are a guitar get, solo are you guys in the middle. Gonna introduce us in Viva Las Vegas, or are you guys yeah. gonna play this? Oh, okay. So we're yeah we're at the pool all three days at Viva Las Vegas. Oh, nice. So we're gonna be playing those songs there but you should go Barry. you got the pool body yeah oh yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. <laughs> so we mentioned we knew a few people um you mentioned you're gonna do some work with the master chops i don't know them but i want to you mm -hmm. mentioned brando von, von badsville is a friend of us on the show past guest oh, right. um do you know the volcanics yeah yeah i know that we've played with the volcanics before in, in i think in florida I know uh, Deke Dickerson's been on the show. You're you're a Deke Dickerson guy. Oh, also, I think yeah. I, one thing I think I kind of want to get on your uh, on, on your cool guy list by saying, oh, I had to put Los Pacalolos on. Essentially, oh, Los yeah, Pacalolos yeah. episode. Uh, Los Pacalolos, I think, are going to be in the breezeway next week to, oh, to film really? something. No fucking yeah. way. Yeah, yeah they, they, uh, they played our our party in my house last. week. Well, last year, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. super good. They're really good. Yeah, like they're really good. I like that cover song. What is that? That Elvis cover song they do? Oh, I don't know. Uh, um, pocket full of rainbows. Pocket full. Uh, of I rainbows. know that because he was drunk screaming it out at his uh, party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, that's right. They but Deke though, so I filmed a, a music, filmed and produced a music video for Deke, and uh, we drove his Cadillac into the hills of like. Oh, it was like Santa like, Rita, right? Yeah, like wherever um, Magic Mountain is. Yeah. Yeah, his 1960, 1960 Cadillac, like convertible Cadillac. Yeah, it's like his pimp car. When and he, he was up, like, he, he rolls up in it. It's dude, like, he was like worried that he was going to like lose his car back there. I mean, it was off-roading. And I was like, trust me, this is the place. And I was like, <laughs> I don't think this is the place. So yeah, rad music video. And then, um, yeah, the reason that I, I feel like it's okay to play a double neck guitar is literally because of Deke Dickerson. 
And I think the reason he thought it was okay to play a double neck guitar was because, of course, uh, Larry Collins, yeah. who recently passed, away. passed yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Otherwise, people just go like, isn't that like a heavy metal thing, like the double neck guitar? And it's like, no, nah, dude. I yeah, mean, I just remember this watch being... Uh, being new to the scene and watching the Collins kids you know he's all little with a double neck guitar yeah the guitar's bigger than him I know genius guitar player yeah and then Deke Dickerson like I said um, when we had uh, uh, from the uh, Reckless ones on mm-hmm Oh, is it Xander? Xander, yeah. yeah Xander mentioned, he's like, every time I bring up Deke, I always want to know two things, a double neck guitar and his clothes, you know? And he, like, Zan- Xander said he'd never seen it also. Yeah, yeah. I but never saw the double neck. <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Well, Deke told me that that double neck was getting kind of old and, and from all the touring. Yeah. And uh, he's like, man, it's heavy to put on. So he's just like, it's. I'd rather play a normal guitar now. But the, oh. re- the way that I found Deke uh, was 19, was it 1998 at the Crest Theater in, in Sacramento? Opening for Mike Ness. Oh, okay. Solo band. Wow. Oh, yeah. that was a good solo band. Thing. And I didn't know what I was watching when I saw Deke up there. I was like, "Wait, this guy's playing a double neck, and I don't know what this music really is." Like, it, I I knew the Stray Cats. You know, I was into yeah. rockabilly, but I didn't. I wasn't deep yet. So yeah. you know, you start getting into into bands like Deke Dickerson and Big Sandy and Russell Scott and that kind of stuff. Um, but. Yeah, it was it was wild, and there was no drinks allowed into the Crest Theater during that show because it's like a really nice theater. And uh, Deke goes, I, "I heard you guys can't have drinks in here. I'm you know I'm real sorry about that, but I have a I have a beer that I can share with y'all, and uh, this is a thing I call the beer the beer fountain. So he sticks like a Budweiser in his mouth, gets off the stage, and then puts his head up." And spins around in a circle and sprays beer all over the theater. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> he also did that at the at the summer I holiday. I wouldn't expect that from him. I because I, I, I don't know him too. Well. He's been on the show, but he seems very like reserved, polite, very reserved. Well, it's show very business. well spoken. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I first time I saw him play, it wasn't even a Dick Dickerson show. This is when he was popping up at other people's uh, performances and coming on and playing with them. Yeah. He came on stage with a Manor Astro Man. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're like, oh shit, Dick Dickerson, you know? Didn't, I didn't recognize didn't him. Frank see him at the airport and he had two two hats on. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess he traveled. He took, he took a picture and sent it to us. Is this Dick? <laughs> and he had like I guess he doesn't want to put in his luggage. Yeah. So he had two he had two hats on on the, on the I was at the airport one time and there was this Mexican dude wearing two Mexican cowboy hats and I'm just like what the hell I is think this because they don't want to put in their luggage yeah and then all of a sudden I had to travel to play somewhere and you know I've got a couple of hats that I wear and yeah. I was doing the same damn thing oh, I was okay. like man that guy was onto something <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, guess here's I, the thing. I didn't know that so good to know because uh, I, want, I want to be a hat guy you know yeah. I'm doing the hair thing now because I you know but I want to be a hat guy <laughs> I want to be a two hat guy. A two hat guy. I want to be a lot of things. I yeah. guess. <laughs> well, yeah, that's definitely. Funny. Oh man. So um, let's talk about your YouTube. So we talked about your band a little bit. Let's talk about the YouTube channel. Um, tell me about the first time, the first video you made, and like what your expectations were going in, and like what your your plan was. Because I did, it, did it originally start as a, a drink review. Uh, it originally started as, as a YouTube channel for the band, literally just posting music videos or performances or whatever, and. Um, and then during COVID, I started making the cocktail videos, and I, I immediately I was wildly disappointed at the amount of views <laughs> because I was like, I get a lot of views on Instagram. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, uh, YouTube's been a challenge, like a pretty aggressive challenge. I remember uh, during COVID, I I was I saw the the Nick Nick Waterhouse had a, a drink. Uh, he played records and make drinks. Right? Oh right, yeah, yeah. And then you had it, and I was like, oh, so. You know, it was it was two cool channels. That. Yeah, you know? I appreciate it. Yeah, it was yeah. A, it was time for people nope. to do fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. Remember, we were wait yeah. for that. Uh, Nick Waterhouse and Spike. Oh, mm. we were waiting. Really? For yeah. <laughs> yeah. So some things stuck around. Some didn't. You yeah, know, totally. unfortunately. But I'm glad you did because that's it, you know it turned out to be something. Uh, it, it grew. And how uh, the views now have grown. Um, also, you mentioned too. I don't know if you want to make this public. You quit your day job and went straight mm-hmm. into content well, he made creation. It public. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> I made it public. I was like, don't give up on me now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was working at Hyundai as a graphic designer there and a, and a photographer. And um, uh, eventually, with some sponsorship and stuff, I was able to, to quit the day job and just do that full time. And it's really weird not going into like an office or a job every day because you go, I don't know what I'm supposed to do all day. Like I could just hang out here and drink, or I could work on my car all day or whatever. But then 
I've like, seen you, your show. You're you're pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm super. Like I can't really just hang out and drink. I, yeah. This this is like nice because it's the middle of the day and we're just having some beers and yeah. it's like great. Um, but if you weren't here, I'd be in my my office editing videos right now. Like it's yeah. it's nonstop. Did you find that challenging in the very beginning to find your style? Because I, I know when we first started the podcast, it took us a few episodes to find our style, our yeah. chemistry, um, our direction. Um, what about with you? I think I'm still. I'm still finding it. I think that I've I've had to walk away from some things that people really liked, like doing bloopers at the end or long forty minute episodes that are just like interview episodes, more more of a podcast. Yeah, and you know, trying to figure out what YouTube wants, which is kind of it's like kind of too bad. But they say like you know you can replace you can replace the phrase algorithm with audience. I don't know if it's the same for Instagram, but for YouTube, I think it's probably pretty accurate. Like the algorithm, the algorithm doesn't like my videos and it's like, well, the audience doesn't like my videos. And I, I mean the general audience. Not I was like, thinking too, though, I know from listening to, cause I told, I do a lot of YouTubing myself, followers and stuff. Yeah. They mentioned too, if you have too many different uh, niches and um, things mm-hmm. in one show, it makes it hard for the algorithm to focus on it. Totally. So if you focus on Tiki or music, if you have one focus, it, 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 uh, it helps you in that, in that, in that way. I think there are people that do just cocktail recipes. Yeah. And I think the YouTube knows exactly what to do with that. I have like guests on. I do yeah. slow motion video stuff, and, like, and you know your stuff, like, yeah. You would do good on podcasts also because, like, your episode, like Del Watson, you guys get into music, get into Elvis stuff, yeah. And like a lot of people want to, a lot of people want to listen to that. Yeah, maybe yeah, yeah se- a separate clips channel or something. There's a um, there's a lot you could do, and I think with the time you have now, you're gonna figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny because like the time that I have now is still consumed with shipping merch. I did take on a job with um, Tiki Farm running their whole social media and and shooting all their products. Oh, that's really cool. So one day a week I'm going to Tiki Farm and I'm photographing everything. My wife sent me a a picture of a – it's a website. I don't want to say their name. mm. They they make stuff out of China. mm -hmm. And they're selling Tiki mugs for $8.00. For uh, eight dollars, yeah, it's uh, well, it's ripoffs because oh. they had one of uh, they, they still your crazy designs. owls, crazy owls, yeah. ape with the fez. No way, and for eight dollars, for eight, and they have in the so I saw the website in the back, it says San Francisco, and just like it was, no way, yeah, yeah and yeah, they're selling Trader knockoff, Vic's yeah. coconuts, they're selling, and I'm like, no, this is, I would not even touch it, you it's know, brutal. I would, I would yeah. not buy it, right. obviously, a person that collects. Authentic tiki stuff would not buy it. But yeah. Yeah. And also, I think that, like, people, a lot of people look at purchasing tiki mugs as, um, I don't want to say, like, like a, a rainy day fund. Uh-huh. But I think a lot of people attach value to those things. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? Like, so if you get some, like, cheap knockoff of the ape mug, it's not worth anything. No. But if you're able to find an original ape mug, you know, then maybe it's three or $400 and... So yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I just saw that. A lot, lot of bootleggers <laughs> yeah. on Facebook. Well, dude, this I is, get this is oh, a really? big website that's selling this stuff. Wow. Oh really? Yeah. Damn, dude. Wait, so on Facebook you're saying there's a lot of bootleg stuff too? Yeah, I get Hula Girls t shirts all the time. Oh, like no people way. saying like you know, but you're not supporting the artist that way. Yeah, no, right. no, I'm totally for that because uh, I don't even like. I feel bad find, buying band shirts when it's not at their show. I'm gonna like go on the website, yeah. get it from the source because you know, I'm, I'm you know, I, I wouldn't call myself an artist, but I'm a content creator. I, yeah, I used to totally. play in a band, so it's kind of something. That, I guess it's personal for me too. But also, like if like if I'm buying a Ramones shirt or something, or like a like a Cramp shirt, yeah, you're just hoping the money goes to Linda or to to Ivy. You know yeah. what I mean? Because that makes it hard too with the really big bands. That makes yeah. it definitely like if I, if, I buy, if I buy a Misfit shirt somewhere, I'm pretty sure Glenn's not getting that money. <laughs> Glenn is not getting that money. <laughs> yeah. You see his most recent video or movie? No, no. Oh, oh, no! I saw a YouTube post on it. I didn't. I cl- I put it for save for later. Red Letter Media. Oh, Red Letter is that who did it? Yeah, it's brutal. It's like what the hell happened in this movie or some shit? Like he's a uh, he was rad in the Misfits. And he was rad as Danzig, like Mother and Twist of Cane and everything. Yeah, but as far as... But he's horrible at making movies. I saw The Misfits like four years ago, three yeah. years ago at uh-huh. the stadium. And when he's singing the songs, it sounds like the 80s, right? Yeah. But when he's talking, I'm like, uh, I was like, I don't think that's him singing now. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. He was like talking to the crowd. He was like, 
I was like, dude, he can't talk. So I'm like, do you think he was singing it like they were using a track? They were using the track. No, <laughs> no way. I, I've never heard this. Like, yeah, I think he was using it. They were using a track. So I saw Danzig in. 90- He's thinking that it's allegedly. He doesn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah allegedly. Just for those uh, listeners who might want to, uh, you know, shake you later. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Danzig. I think in '94 or '95, something like that. It was like right when Mother came out, and uh, he was incredible. Oh yeah. Yeah, I saw I saw Urban Danzig Meadows. too. Uh, he sounded great, you yeah. know. He still had the moves. He's like bobbing his head, like, oh, he's at a bald spot, but he sounded great. Yeah, like yeah, he still, yeah. he was, hey, he still look. I mean, it was a great show. It was uh, him and Suicidal Tendencies. I was like, oh, that was a cool show. Oh, okay, yeah, that was like Muse Inc. or something, right? I couldn't remember. I still yeah. drink back then. So. Oh, okay, yeah, I think. Um, but seeing him in like the early mid '90s, oh, dude, yeah, he that, was that in was heyday, peak, maybe. peak form, dude, yeah, like ripped and like singing yeah. incredible. That's why I always like whenever I try to catch a band that I know is good, like for instance, it's Pacalolos or mm-hmm. other bands. I I, I, I get ghost. excited seeing them now because you know this is in their prime. This is them and they're when they're when they have they're in their twenties, a full yeah. energy. This is before like the family comes in. This is before all the you know it, this is this is it right now. A band in their prime. That's a thing. Well, they're you like know? the Hula Girls. Yeah, like the Hula Girls. <laughs> Same thing with a director oh. in their prime. You know, like Quentin Tarantino in the nineties. You oh, know, right, compared yeah. to now, it's like there's a certain time period where even though it's still good, don't get oh, me wrong, later, yeah. but it's not that same energy. You're right. It's a different thing. Thing. Yeah, like, like Tarantino in the '90s was like, yeah, very experimental and stuff. I like, think he's still incredible. Like, yeah, but it's you're right, it's different. Yeah, like I said, something happens. Like I get married. There's a couple of kids. They soften up a bit, you know. Yeah, yeah. They're watching cartoons. They're not watching horror all the time because yeah, I got my kid here. You know, just something <laughs> happens to where yeah, yeah. You start looking at uh, Home Depot uh, paint magazines. <laughs> just paint <laughs> chips. Sometimes yeah. you lose your edge. Yeah, you lose your you lose your edge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like uh, was it? Who is that? That's one director I brought up a lot to is Quentin Tarantino. How he just, it's not quite the same anymore. Yeah, I used to get excited when a new film would come out. Huh. I mean, that movie was good. Uh, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That was yeah. a great movie. You know what? Yeah. I didn't see it. That oh, you didn't a, see it? No. That was an oh, was amazing great. movie. Yeah. yeah. Last, I one I saw was that, um, last one I saw was that Jamie Foxx one. Oh, yeah. I, was, I yeah. thought that was good, but it's not as good as Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, okay. Um, I was, so I was, we were playing at Clifton's all the time at the uh, the Tiki Bar there. Oh, uh, that's an amazing bar. Yeah. Oh, what's it called? Um, the Pacific Seas. Pacific Seas, yeah. So so I used to drive my Econoline to those gigs every time. 1961 Econoline. And uh, no windows, no door locks or anything. So I'd be driving through like Skid Row just going, please don't die. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I was driving. I was going to turn right on Broadway and um, all of these old cars were lining up to go left down Broadway. And I was like, what are all these old cars? And they were, it wasn't like a car show. Yeah. It was like some really nice cars, some just like normal old cars, like 70 or say 50s, 60s, maybe 50s, 60s. And uh, I was like, maybe I should just go left and follow them. And it was like a guy with a walkie talkie, like sending people down. I think they were filming that movie. Oh, and I wish I would have turned left and just like seen what happened. Yeah. You know, yeah. See, I feel terrible now for saying that. I gotta watch the movie when I get home. Dude, oh, you gotta watch it. Yeah, it's no, like great. I, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I just mentioned the edge thing is all because <laughs> you know the, it's the meme of DiCaprio pointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I know. Well, I know the meme. Very what well. was that restaurant in Hollywood? Uh, I can't think. Well, there's Musso and Frank's. Musso and Frank's. Yeah, that was great. That's have, a great have restaurant. You been there? Yes, that's have amazing. You had the, the martini there. Yeah. I tell you, there's something about the martini in that building that you can't replicate anywhere else. And and there was an old bartender that said he would go home at night and make the martini at his house the same way that he always did it. And there's only, what, two ingredients? Well, there's three ingredients. Three ingredients, yeah. There's, uh, what, gin, there's vermouth, and then ice. He said he could not make it taste the same. And it's because the ice, I, this is my thought, is yeah. because the ice is different in that building. I I had the martini. It was amazing as with a, the steak a, with the steak there, and then the gut. The waiters come in with the suits. Yeah, just, it's just perfect. Amazing. Charlie Chapman used to go there in a horse. Yeah, he <laughs> just tie his horse up out front. Yes. So what I was the like, f- that, where's this place at? It's <laughs> in Hollywood. Somewhere. You've never been anywhere. Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know how I saw Hollywood want, Boulevard. I, there's a bunch of stuff I want to do. I want to go. I want to go more places now. How about yeah, that? Add to my list. Franks, you got to go there. Yeah. 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 It's fancy. Oh yeah. 
So they, won't, they will not let you in. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to borrow one of Spike's hats. They, yeah. they have to let me in. <laughs> no, that's a good restaurant. Yeah, totally. No, so you would, so um, for your show, too, I see that you uh, do reviews on drinks. Like you, um, I saw the one you went to Tennessee. You were doing bar reviews oh, yeah. there. Do you do that in L.A. as well? Do you kind of just, is that part of your content I don't think well? you do a bar review in L.A., huh? I have not done a bar review in L.A. I have one, I think, coming up here pretty soon for, actually two, for the Royal Hawaiian in Laguna Beach, and then one for Stowaway in Tustin. And, um, it's it's funny because when I did that that um, Nashville one with my chick friend, um, she's like, I can't really say anything too bad because I live here and yeah. like I have to go back to these places eventually. Yeah. And then I was thinking the same thing. I was like, when I did the reviews here, I was like, oh, dude, I can't say anything too bad because these are. First of all, these are people I know who own these places. Like, <laughs> oh man, yeah. So you know. You're gonna you're gonna be a tiki the show. San, San Francisco. You know, like those critics movies that they, they get they get good um, good um, reviews because they want the access. Totally. You're a tiki show. I know. <laughs> the San Francisco one was cool. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah that was that was fun, and I think that was pretty. I was pretty honest. I don't think that, you know, unless I have like a really bad experience at a tiki bar, I don't think I would ever say anything too bad yeah. about. Well, could, would it be constructive criticism? For sure. Yeah, you because I, I think we had a really good time at the. Um, the Reef Bar in Palm Springs, and that's yeah. another bar that's owned one by one, by one of my buddies. Uh, but they were playing like hip hop and stuff. And yeah. Music's the easiest thing to fix. Yeah, that's and right. you know if you're in a place that is like heavily themed, like a tiki bar, hip hop doesn't belong in there. Yeah. And just like speed metal doesn't belong in there. You have such a good eye for detail, which I keep bringing up. You were talking Thanks. about the menus. You were talking about like um, what's it called? The um, the, 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 the cups. The f like we want fiery drinks. You know, I'm like mm -hmm. ah, fiery drinks. Mm -hmm. Like it's like I said, just say, everything about it you mentioned the aesthetic, the lights, the music. You have such an eye for detail, and I think uh, places could definitely benefit off that, whether it's good or bad. Yeah, I mean, I think that. If you're a bar owner, because people people trust you, I know oh, that. I, I know people who follow you. She's like, oh, I trust them. <laughs> I appreciate that. I mean, I've been into it for a long time, and yeah. I think that you know my aesthetic is is very traditional to what Tiki, what Tiki's intention was. You know, I think I like a little bit of like more modern music in Tiki bars, and I by modern I mean like 1960s stuff. Like yeah. traditional Tiki bars was, was probably like jazz or Hawaiian music or you know exotica or something but um yeah i don't know i think you know if i can contribute in some way to a tiki bar like by consulting or something i <laughs> you know i'd be happy to to point them in the right yeah. direction so i don't know well you're coming to you're gonna come to george's uh, tiki hut i want i want you oh. you, you gotta <laughs> you got a clean house what was that bar rescue it's gonna be you you're gonna, be all, you're yeah, gonna have your crew with you taffer yeah <laughs> Creature? No, you don't have to do Creature to the Back Lagoon here. Yeah. <laughs> like, shut no, it down. No, no Blue Lagoon. I, <laughs> oh, girl. I said Blue Lagoon. Yeah, you know, I'm a mess. My listeners know I'm a mess. I, I'm bad with names sometimes. And yeah, I, you're good. I'm, uh, you know, <laughs> that's part of it, though. Right? The, the thing about podcasting is as long as you're yourself, you know, just like a show, yeah. it feels authentic because it does feel like yourself. And that's what I try to do here. And then also, too, like I, that's one thing I appreciate your show. A lot of things I appreciate your show about. I feel so weird like I'm kissing his ass right now. Like, oh, no. I've like, oh, been mean. watching it for a past couple of days going holy shit i've been yeah. watching it for years i can't yeah. believe i'm here you know oh, that's yeah. cool appreciate yeah. it did you have big sandy on your show big sandy i'm actually working on okay as we speak uh, his, his old bass player used to live here with me oh okay. no way. Yeah. we have the guy from the gassy ones it? oh norman Norm, yeah. norman yeah, cabrera yeah, yeah he's yeah. a friend of the show uh-huh great guy great guy totally yeah uh very very uh, fucking knowledgeable too on just on on, on uh, surf culture and just fucking horror. Like I love talking horror with them. Let me let me ask you something because I, I part of my goal with Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour is bringing in hopefully a younger audience. Yeah, um, I think that's important for subcultures to Absolutely. like bring in younger people and, and keep the thing moving. Uh, what do you? Okay, and so for the last couple of years going to Viva Las Vegas. I've looked around and God, my God, everybody yeah. is so old. Yep. I the rockabilly that. scene's very I old. That. I went well, last year. Old, I haven't but... been there in a few years. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. It's just... When I used to go, like at the, at the earlier days of Viva Las Vegas, it was like the casino was filled with young people, like causing a commotion. And now it just feels like a very polite kind of thing. W Talking to those bands and stuff who you've interviewed, do you, where do you see all of that going? Well, I, it's, it's a problem too in our scene too as well as Psychobilly, where both yeah. it, it comes up a lot. Once you mentioned, I knew exactly where you were going. Is that it is a much older scene. 
Um, I think what, I've heard a solution is we need more bands. Like we need more bands that um, kind of bring it back because a lot of the bands you see at the bigger shows are the ones who've been playing them for years. You know, mm -hmm. like some of the same, like Batmobile still plays. You know, Dimension Argo still plays. But there's so many good bands that are yeah. coming up in the scene that you're just focused on these. Are there? Yeah, there we, is. we've got we've in had psychobilly or uh, rockabilly garage. You know, there's a lot of good bands in rockabilly. There are yeah. I, Rockabilly, I don't know. Psychobilly, there are some, we've had okay. some young up-and-comers plus some new ones I'm going for. Yeah. It's just, I don't know how the scene works. The scene always goes up and down. You've been around for a while. You've seen, especially, I remember when I first got into the scene, Rockabilly was a lot bigger. Viva Las Vegas, I was there in the early oh, years the too. Yeah. Nanny, like Oh God, the Hoot Nanny was so great. Ink and Iron. Um, Ink heard, and Iron was great. I heard Ink and Iron killed Hoot Nanny, then um, Ink and Iron left and went to uh, what, yeah. Nashville. Yeah, and then really blew it. I think also too is um yeah that is a, a challenge a younger audience. I mentioned earlier too as far as um, um at that time too mainstream got a hold of it if you remember correct yeah uh, it was um that that look was popular uh -huh. um just the, the the hair I have the like that's something I was thinking about myself too for my show as well as um, a younger audience it it's, yeah. it comes up on mine plus other um shows where uh, the bands talk about how yeah it's a much older audience and. I think uh, creating new bands. I think what you and me are doing right now is going to help mm -hmm. too. Is um, I think music's lost its importance. Importance. Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I mentioned too. Like you mentioned, remember for instance, I mentioned like uh, uh, mainstream like film and stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember when Stranger Things came out. All of a sudden, '80s came back. You know, oh, '80s sure, aesthetic yeah. came back. Remember when I remember when fucking a Johnny Cash movie came out. Oh Every, yeah, uh, that whole thing got popular. Everybody so loves I, Johnny Cash all of a sudden. Yeah, it's like, all of a sudden Johnny Cash. It's like was where big. were you guys? Yes, you know when. Um, but some you mentioned movie swingers earlier mm -hmm. too. That kind of had a had had an impact. That's a on good things. point. I think that me. I think the movies really do impact um, subcultures. Yeah. And I wonder what it would take for a, a a rockabilly scene to pop up again, like bigger, or a tiki scene to to pop up bigger. Because I was thinking about you know how now movies are taking place. They're going back to the eighties, right? Going back to the nineties, yeah. even two thousands. Well, when we were growing up in the two thousands, they were doing stuff from the nineteen sixties and fifties because it seemed like it was closer to that generation. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember the Bamba was big when I was a kid. You know, there was, yeah, always, yeah. there was like movies that like I, I feel film does have a um, a place in, in helping the scene as well. Right. Along yeah. with like I said, music did lose its um and, uh, and not importance, but it's more accessible now, mm -hmm. which makes people take it for granted. You know, you don't I, absolutely you're you not going into Tower Records and paying for it yeah, with your own money. Yeah, yeah. You don't hold it as sacred in, anymore. Like it's like, okay if if I lose a record, I could just download it later. You know, totally. I could just get it for free on YouTube. But I would I would say that social distortion really is what what got me into like rockabilly surf swing all that kind of stuff yeah. and it's because social distortion like had elements of that kind of stuff and um you know i just Their don't style also the style yeah, yeah for sure mike I, ness and all that i feel there's a lot of factors to it but I, and also things just trends come and go yeah but the the rockabilly thing has been on a downward trend aggressively for like the last five six it seems years. like it's aged out yeah which is like a big problem I think, you know, for keeping that stuff alive. And it's weird, too, because you don't see that as much with, like, say, metal. Metal, for some reason, always has a place. And every yeah. every part of the world well, is, like, a Some of their scene. legends are still playing. You know? Yeah. But also metal metal evolves, too. Ah, like, uh, yeah. I mean, there's, like, even, you know, if you look at Metallica, it went from speed metal to, you know, whatever they did to where they are now. It's, um, And then, yeah, I don't know. But then there's, like, bands like Slipknot or, you know, I don't know metal that much, but different genres within that because growing up we, we saw chuck berry we, we saw did see chuck yeah. berry yeah we saw jerry Lee lewis yeah. the guy with the sneakers i'm like who's that like what, what is he doing here it turns out who, who was this uh, oh that's right we saw we saw so I many forgot what it was we like, can't go there and see them now so these, yeah. no, these guys growing up can't see those right wanda well, the hoot, jackson well the hoot nanny was it was like the cramps with buck owens and you yeah. go what are you talking about dude that's yeah. like, Insane lineup. I think about that too. Is um, I suck. I thought it was bad at the time, but I realized it actually did help the scene. Where people almost went there to play dress up. They would get the cuff jeans and kind of go just to have I mean, a I look. I think that's what Viva Las Vegas is for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think there was that uh, that that to it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. I just think basically uh, people need to. Sh uh, we just need a younger generation. I think Phil. I think it's a little bit of everything. Yeah. Social media trends going up and down. Um, also, p but people who are older. A lot of vintage stuff. A lot of younger kids love that stuff yeah i think know? i think also people yeah just i think i, I mentioned him i think shows like mine and his are mm -hmm. contributing to it but we haven't quite got there yet oh spike did a lot for the tiki culture i'm oh, telling you that right that. now thanks man. like a lot of people that weren't even into it are are 
deep in the TP. Didn't deep you tell me somebody was um, leaving me in comments to somebody because they had the hat on like him and they're oh, like, really? oh, you're ripping off Spike. Oh, that's right. I saw a video on, where yeah. some guy um, was making. He's in the rest. I'll be back. Yeah. Some, some guy was making a cocktail show and he had the captain's hat. It was a guy named Matt. Yes. So he had which the is cap- my real name. <laughs> and he had the he had the beard going. Yeah. And he was like, somebody said. It was a fake me. Yes. And they were like, <laughs> it's a. That was wild. I'm just like, okay, you're trying to be Spike now. <laughs> Come on. That's really funny. <laughs> I'll tell you, I think that as far as like rockabilly music goes, like the rockabilly scene, I think that, I think that like the Mexican um, community are the only people that are really holding it together. It's huge in LA. Yeah. Like you see these DJ hops. I'm like, yeah, I know. And it's still going on. Totally. And it's, yeah. I think grew- that's the only thing that's keeping it together. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. I mean, you guys are playing the Bamboo Club here in Long Beach pretty soon. That's going to be a good show. Yeah. It's going to be a good yeah, turnout, totally. and and yeah, it's going to be good. And we have Audrey Deluxe uh, performing with us, which is the, the chick who is like the head uh, burlesque lady of Viva Las Vegas. Oh, nice. So, um, yeah, Audrey's great. And uh, I think we're performing with Surfer Joe from Italy. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I love that bamboo because if you have a show at the Alex Bar, you mm-hmm. can get pre drinks at the bamboo club and yeah. hit up the Alex Bar. I know. <laughs> I know. Good. I love we Alex's saw, Bar. We saw, uh, I saw uh, Kid Congo there. Oh, uh, wow. Like, um, like three weeks ago. And so we got uh, drinks at the Alex Bar. Yeah. We came over here, uh-huh. saw Kid Congo. It was uh-huh. just like, what a night, you know? Kid Congo, of course, was in the Cramps, right? Yeah, he was in the Cramps. And then also he was in my one of my other favorite bands, The Gun Club. The Gun Club, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Wild. Just, was it a good show? It was an amazing show. Was he, he, just, he was good? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's a, yeah, it was an amazing show. He's just, he's so lively on stage yeah, and yeah. it's great. I was looking at your posters on your wall with frames, by the way, coming <laughs> out. Yeah. And I love that aesthetic too. Like I told you, those are old films. Those are, uh, mm-hmm. that was part, was part of culture. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, I, I have so many theories about what you brought up. I'm going to kill myself later because I know once I go home, I'm like, oh, there's a couple of other ones oh, that, right, have yeah, that yeah. I didn't bring up. But I, I think one of the things too is, yeah, film and t- television. Mm-hmm. Um, we lost that. Oh, remember, we're going, remember, Happy Days was a thing, you know? Yeah, or, yeah. Good, like yeah. I said, good or bad, there was that, there was uh, that. It was um, it was a part of culture. You know? Well, there's it an was, interest in there. the 1950s because the 1950s from the 80s was only what 20 years exactly. Yeah, like or I mentioned, 30 years, 50, 60, yeah, 50, <laughs> 30 years. Yeah, it's because people back making movies or kids in the 50s. Right, you know? and like I mentioned so too, now the they're making now, everything in the 90s. In the 90s, you know? I know, and you're just like the 90s were. I mean, the 90s were good for like. Alt rock, I think. Yeah. Like I love, you know, Dinosaur Junior and that kind of stuff. I think it's great, uh, but it's not the same as yeah, being in the eighties and then looking back thirty years and going, you know, rockabilly was really going. Well, everything has a feel to it. The nineties have a feel to it. Like the technology was different. The the um, totally. The, the you know the records were still a thing, but there was tape. And then mm-hmm. like I said, there was a. Uh, I, I how do I say? It? But fit, the fifties and sixties also have a, a feel to it too. More analog, more mm-hmm. everything seemed like it was made more with care and love. Mm-hmm. Whether from the cars or just the design of things too. So you could see definitely you could see the time periods. I. What am I trying to say now? Too, it wasn't is, as disposable. I think yeah. I think I that's think it. I think that's it. So disposable now. I, I think you're onto it. Like TikTok being you know you spend hours on like a 30 second or a 60 second video and then it's it's posted and gone yeah like immediately yeah i think you're right i think that's, that's and everybody's chasing like that quick like fame yeah, or whatever quick fame. yeah instead of a band like the blasters that grinded it out from the 70s till you know just recently when they had to stop but you know playing a million shows <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i think i'm like my brainstorming now it's like yeah, yeah. It's just disposable now, so much of that too. And also too, I don't know if people are sharing that with their children now, you know, like like yeah, George has his daughter. We, we recently, we were watching, uh, she saw Beetlejuice for the first time when he had his uh, his uh, uh, movie night for Halloween and stuff. And yeah, yeah. she's never seen it before. I didn't want to so. show her too early because it's kind of perverted. Everything back then is kind of perverted. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, a, it's kind of scary. Yeah. Like there's scary stuff. So I was a little waiting, but I'm excited to show her. Like she yeah. saw her Gremlins this year. Oh, and, cool. And I was like, all right. How old is she? She's uh twelve. Oh, okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's good. I, I, I know. I saw those movies when I was nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's different. I don't. Want to... 
like I said, so I, I brought it before that so many uh, things I saw at a young, I had a cool mom, so I saw so many things at a very young age that I probably shouldn't have seen, and yeah. like, uh, I, I think I turned out okay, but it I was a know. different time, though. <laughs> oh, I don't check <laughs> out. <laughs> you did not turn out okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But, um, yeah, it was a different time. And like I said, it was everywhere on television. Like, I'm wa- I was watching mm-hmm. old Nickelodeon shows. Um, we bring up the 90s recently. And I'm like, ooh, they couldn't get away with that one now. Right. It was a family show, you know? Yeah, totally. But it was just they're making fun of a fat guy. Yeah. And I think that's that's some of the stuff that I like about Tiki is that it they would tread on, like, kind of taboo tropes of, like, the topless beautiful maiden and, like, sacrifices. And Tiki is Tiki's supposed to be scary and dangerous. Yeah. And I think a lot of people get it wrong. I think a lot of people think that it's, like, happy party beach time. The and, like, there's probably... With the, with the ukulele. With the ukulele, <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think there's that aspect of it, too. But I think the best Tiki is, like... The cannibals. Cannibals, yeah. <laughs> cannibals. <laughs> totally. Oh, I heard they took off the shrunken heads from Disneyland, uh... The they did, <laughs> because they were afraid of uh, offending people with shrunken heads. <laughs> head shrinkers. <laughs> Wait, isn't there like an image or a video of you with a shrunken head? Like I'm trying to think of it. Oh, oh yeah. it's at the Tiki Bar. It's yeah. at the, the Golden Tiki. Golden okay. Tiki. Yeah, and they the thumbnail. awarded me with a, a shrunken head. Yeah, I was upset because I went to the after the ceremony. <laughs> yeah, after you got your shrunken head. Were you there? No, no, no. Oh. I went. Two weeks later, okay. and it wasn't on display. I'm oh like, yeah, oh. It, it took a while. So you bring up Beetle. That's one of my favorite scenes in Beetlejuice, where he fucking he steals a guy's ticket, and he fucking shrinks his head. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, I was next to Nick Cage for a while in oh, that, that's in that pretty shrunken cool. head. Yeah, cabinet. What is? I that? love the Devo one. Devo wasn't there, was there? Were they? Devos. Yeah, Devo, they have Devo. Yeah, were they at the bar? I, I was in a. Uh, what do you mean at the bar? Like, I mean, did there... they get a ceremony for Devo? Oh, no, I don't no, think so. Okay, no, okay, I think okay. they were just giving people shrunken heads oh, just okay. to give them. I, want to I, was back... in a, I was in a band with the bass player from Devo. Oh, no shit. For Tiki Oasis. We that did is... Devo songs hula girl style. Oh, nice. Wow. That's, that's weird. That's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so you mentioned hula girls, the hula girls show. When did the, um, I'm going to bring it up, the models. When did the, when did the girls come in? Is that like in, in the very beginning of your idea or is that just something that kind of, to get your views up? <laughs> um, it's it's funny because I had a girlfriend at the time who was like, "You should have like hot pinup go go dancers," and I was like, "Yeah, you're super right about that." <laughs> yeah, and so um, the first my first pinup or uh, first hula go go dancer chick was uh, Ruby Champagne, and then uh, after that, a couple other girls, and now I have like a you know I have a family of go go dancer chicks women women <laughs> i'm joking no yeah so i lost my chance i was thinking about how i want to bring back shrunken heads i want to bring back quicksand remember quicksand was a thing when we were kids when i was a kid <laughs> how you gonna bring that back <laughs> how you gonna bring back quicksand <laughs> i don't want quicksand in my bar you're just like trying to get a drink and you're like ah Put it back in. Uh, I don't know. I, I lost my train of thought. I'm just laughing at you guys. So yeah. So dang, you you've really been around. Every time he brings up something, you had a guy from Devo. Like I, I like oh, it. Yeah. yeah. You have a, a wealth of knowledge and experience, and a little bit of everything. It seems. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been. I've just been busy for yeah. a long time. Yeah. I like I like cool stuff. So I've tried to inject myself in cool stuff for a long time. I you know one of the things that we were talking about earlier was the Hoot Nanny Festival and oh definitely like, old, yeah. It, it's just it's um. For people who are interested in music today, they have no idea what they missed. And it was like Bo Diddley playing with X and like, like I said, like the cramps with um, Buck Owens and Social Social Distortion Distortion. and yeah, like the wild lineups that you, they look like, they look like a joke now. (laughs) Yeah, I saw the Stray Cats there. Yeah, the Stray Cats were at... um, was it Fullerton? Fullerton. I was there too. There was, was no there. shade. Oh my god! I was thinking that too. It was no freaking shade because yeah. it wasn't originally. It was at the Oak Canyon or whatever, right? right? Yeah. And it was like trees you could at least go under. Totally. Yeah, there was. It was brutal. And I think it was right after nine eleven. It was two thousand three, I think. Oh, was it? Yeah, that's kind of right after. Well, it's nine. It's nine eleven yeah. era, but yeah, yeah. But I, I remember sets are playing because um, oh one. I remember that because it was a Rev and Chuck Berry because I was that's the first one I went to. Okay, that's the first time I saw the Amazing Royal Crowns, and I was like, this I was is there too. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it wild when you think of like <laughs> all the shows that you were at that you were probably at the same show? Yeah. as somebody else, and you just didn't know each other yet. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. It happens a lot with bands. Oh, I, I first saw you at this show, you know, yeah. and I have them on the show later. And so, like, oh, I feel old. I'm like, no, no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't know. It's, um, there aren't those, well, there are those festivals still, but they're just not, 
they're just not like they were, you know. Yeah. Well, not not for that subculture though. Even for Psychobilly, we like we had like one really good. Um, there was those L.A. Showdown shows. He used to have Rockabilly Night, Psychobilly oh, Night. Mm-hmm. The then, L.A. Showdowns were huge. Yeah, then it became the Rockabilly Showdown. Um, or no, it was Rockabilly Showdown. Then it became the L.A. Showdown because at the time mm. Psychobilly got so big, so they still had two nights. But of they had like the Rockabilly stuff. Yeah, that was like Sunday. It was like night Friday, Saturday yeah, Psychobilly, then yeah, Sunday yeah. it was Rockabilly. There were, well, there was a thing at the observatory that was like one night was Rockabilly and one night was Psychobilly. It was Reverend Horton Heat both nights. Oh, okay. But then it was like Resurrects and Necromantics and I don't know if you remember that show. Uh, I'm not sure if I do. I, I might did have, the poster for that. I might have been there. Yeah. I might have been there. Didn't Rev have a thing going on? The Holy Roller or something like that? Yeah. Did they have some kind of their own thing at one something. point? Yeah, there was that. Then, of course, we mentioned Ink and Iron. It was really interesting because you had fucking... I remember, I'm like, I saw what, I saw Batmobile. I saw Buzzcocks And all of a sudden, there. fucking... Yeah, yeah we saw too. the Buzzcocks. And next thing you know, oh, here comes Madball. I'm like, Madball? Yeah, <laughs> it was totally. Very, very and mixed. Fear, and Fear. Oh, yeah. And we, we played the same day as Fear. And I was backstage trying to get my check for, for playing. <laughs> and I'm standing next to this old guy. And I, I go, oh, my God, this is... It's Lee Ving standing next to me. Oh, that's cool. And uh, the guy goes, All right, I'm going to go get the check. I'll be right back. And so I'm standing there with Lee Ving just <laughs> waiting for our checks. Yeah. And I go, hey, dude, I just want to let you know I'm a giant fan of fear. And he goes, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. You, uh, you playing? And I go, yeah, I got a band called the hula girls <laughs> and he's like oh man i checked you guys out i looked at everybody and i go well, you don't have to say that it's okay and he goes uh, i really man i really liked your music it was real real nice stuff you know i used to be real angry and i was like wait wait what and uh he goes yeah i was man i was real angry but i like all kinds of stuff now and i was like oh thank you <laughs> leaving wow that's cool. that's, yeah. that's, that's that's cool. One of the last ones we saw with the Buzzcocks and the Damned, I think. The I Damned. Oh, yeah. Damned. Oh, yeah. I saw Fred Armisen. I was super drunk. And he went to go. See, and I, went, I, I tapped him on the shoulder. I hold him. He was like, get away from me. <laughs> oh, no. I think I saw the Klingons that earlier that day, too, in the same show. Like I said, it was so rich. It was mixed, but yeah. it, just, it did very well. Yeah, totally. And I think it got too big for its own good. I think they had, like, Iggy Pop. It got to the point where it was, like, you know, the headliner was costing them, like, $80,000 or Ooh. something. And then they were getting grinded by, like, you know, the city of Long Beach. And so, I don't know. The Queen Mary's open again, and I think they're talking about doing festivals again. That'd so, be cool. Yeah. I didn't stay there. I stayed at the hotel down the way because the Queen Mary just looks too small. I'm a big guy. I need space. <laughs> I need yeah. space. I need, a little, I need, like, a decent bathroom. That's I like that fucking, bar at the Queen Mary. It's, like, really yeah, old the school. the Observation Bar. Yeah, I love we played that bar. There. Yeah, that's a cool bar. We played there, and um, what's his name? God, I forget his name from the specials showed up. Uh... He was the guitar player in the specials. Mm. Oh man, I can't remember his name, but he yeah he was like dancing to our music the whole time. Oh, that is, that's cool. Yeah, it was rad. Okay, so we been we mentioned the history of Tiki. We mentioned your sound and gear. Um, let's see. Oh, okay. So you mentioned some of your. Oh, let's talk about some of your favorite drinks. You mentioned Mai Tai. That's one of them. Mm-hmm. Give me two more that you would uh, recommend as for somebody coming in to do the Tiki culture. That's I guess friendly for casuals, taste wise. Oh, friendly for casuals, taste wise. I would I would suggest. Like a painkiller. Ah, yes, yes. It's like coconut and orange juice and pineapple juice and like, it's it's a very easy cocktail. Just don't batch it like I did. Yeah, hold on. I once. had a party and I batched it and it separated. And then like, no, it wouldn't come out out of the out of the. Out of did the you notch. have to get out to use the restroom? I'm sorry, did I trap you? No, no, you're good. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. No, no, I he just, got up and then he sat back down oh, like he was doing camera stuff. Oh, okay, okay. Because I was, <laughs> I want to stay focused. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, painkiller is good though. Okay, mm-hmm. so painkiller. Okay, mm-hmm. so Mai Tai, painkiller. Give me one more. I, uh, I think like the 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 cocktail that I make the most often is is just a daiquiri, which mm. is just rum, lime, and sugar. It's essentially the same thing as like a uh, margarita, just swapping, um, you know, tequila for rum. But it's shaken and it's served up, so it's like a you know no ice and stuff. I remember when I, before I got here, I uh, George texted me, "Do not bring up old fashions; those are not tiki drinks." Because <laughs> oh, I probably because I had the Pacalos. Pacalos. Like, oh, oh yeah. I like the old fashioned. I was like, "Oh, that's a tiki drink." I'm like, "That's not a tiki yeah. drink." Yeah, <laughs> I'm such a casual when it comes yeah. to this, and it fucking drives him crazy. It's kind of like if he brings up Star Wars, I'm like, "No, no, that's not it. That's wrong. <laughs> that's wrong." Right? Yeah. So he's very. Uh, this, this is his thing right here. Like his wheelhouse is like you know older stuff, 50s, 60s, tiki. You know, totally. for me it would be like 80s horror, psychobilly. You know, or just other nerd stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and Kokar stand up, you know, big stand up nerd. I'm not sure if you're a fan of stand up comedy. Yeah, I love stand up comedy. Yeah. I think Norm MacDonald's a genius. Oh, Norm MacDonald. So you're probably a Mark Norman fan then. I don't know Mark Norman that much. Yeah, or... Mark Norman's like a, I would call him like a Norm MacDonald Seinfeld. Okay. Well, more offensive. 
Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, he's like a new Norm Macdonald, I yeah. think. Really? Yeah, okay. he's really good. Yeah, Check yeah. Check him out. New York comic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I, like, yeah, just, just oh, a little but more offensive. Oh, Norm Macdonald, Dirty Work, that was exciting. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> So that's nine. That's nineties right there. Yeah. All yeah. the all the colored shirts he wore, like bright colored shirts. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So okay. So we talked about your drink recommendations. We talked about film a little bit. Where, where, what's your uh, collection like? Since you like, it seems like you like having a uh, physical media. Judging by your record um, collection, I saw outside. What kind of what kind of films are you into? Uh, what do you, what's your go to? Oh, films. Yeah. Man, I don't. You know, I. <laughs> I like a lot of like Vietnam War movies. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like big into that. I I love westerns. I love like everything that Clint Eastwood's done. I think The Unforgiven is is probably my favorite Clint Eastwood western. I like all the old fifties and sixties stuff too. But like The Unforgiven, I there was like a line in that movie where um, Clint Eastwood goes into the bar and he shoots all these guys or whatever. And uh, the mayor is the mayor. Or the bartender comes down and goes, "You just shot an unarmed man." Oh, he, he goes, should have been armed. He should have armed himself. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. That was in the trailer. Yeah. Was Unforgiven the one with Morgan Freeman? Yeah. Oh, that's right. He shot the bartender because he propped him up in front of his uh, um, his bar. In a, in a, in a, oh, that was a dark scene. I saw yeah. that as a kid, too. See? Shit. Maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe there's something wrong with me. It's a heavy movie. <laughs> it's a heavy movie, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then um, the girl with the slashed up face, the prostitute. Yeah, yeah. That, from oh, that same man. movie. Yeah. I got to rewatch that one. Yeah. yeah. Clint Eastwood. That's a... That's a thing with There him. was also a movie where he painted the whole town red. And I, oh, High Plains Drifter. High Plains Drifter. And uh, I think he was a ghost the whole time. And like, it's brutal, dude. There's like, it, it, I can't even say what happens. I, I don't want to say on microphone, whatever <laughs> yeah, you call it. Yeah, yeah. Because like, it's, yeah, it's wildly offensive. But also, you know, people weren't scared to make yes. interesting movies back then. That's, that's you true, know? yeah. It seemed to, and it was, like, really push. Like, you know. Now you got to watch out everything yeah. you do. You got to yeah. watch out for It everything. seems like movies now, there's a certain formula. If you don't stick to it, you, you, you can't, uh, you won't get, you won't get, you won't get a release. Yeah. Maybe, the, maybe in the independent era, era, you might have some more wiggle room. I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I'm not much for independent films. Mm -hmm. I want to be, but I just feel like, I'll, I don't know. I just, I haven't, I haven't taken that step yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, my, f my favorite movie though of all time is Back to the Future. Oh, oh yeah. We're just and talking I just, about that. I, I honestly think that that's like one of the most perfect movies of all time. Like yeah. there's always payoffs for everything that they, like there's hidden stuff and there's payoffs and, um, it's just well written. Yeah. I know? like it too. Cause culture wise as 1980s of the rock and roll dun, yeah. dun, and then the 1950s, you know? Yeah. And I kind of wonder with like some of my buddies who are like in their fifties and sixties who are into rockabilly. I'd, I'd be curious to, because I've heard like when that movie came out, they, maybe they thought it was kind of cheesy or whatever, because it was kind of portraying the fifties as like, you know, Mr. Sandman and yeah. like, you know, kind of whatever. But yeah, I'd be, I'd be curious to talk to those friends about what they thought of back to the future. Oh yeah. Dude. I didn't realize until I, as an adult, probably like, I don't know how maybe 2018, wait, 17 or 18, um, that that wasn't, what's this called? Um, Oh god, the dad, he wasn't in part two. They had like a oh, yeah. a prosthetic. Yeah, they turned him upside down in that movie. Yeah. They couldn't and, afford him anymore or something. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I guess yeah, it was a, it was a financial thing. What was his name? They sued him. Yeah. Or no, he sued them. Yeah, and it kind of uh I guess cuz there wasn't um there wasn't that wasn't on the books yet about uh likeness and stuff. It wasn't mm, really mm -hmm. it wasn't a, a thing yet. Yeah, I forget his name. Uh no, uh, Chris no 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 no. I know he had a band too. He uh, fuck Every time I see that uh, Burger King in Burbank, I'm like, oh, Back to the Future. Oh, is that the one? <laughs> yeah. The Doc's house was supposed yeah, to be next so to Yeah, so Doc's house is supposed to be where yeah. Toys R Us is yeah. at. Oh. But, well, of course, it's like a Hobby Lobby now or yeah. something. Yeah. But yeah. it's where, like, Marty skates out of the yeah. backyard. Yeah. yeah. yeah and no, and, and yeah, then Doc's the high house. school is also in Burbank. Yeah. 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 And yeah Doc's then, house is in Pasadena. Yeah. Well, Doc's the house. Gamble and, house. Then, and then the Marty's house is in Arlita, which oh. is. Oh. Yeah. Where's Arlita? It's. Or in the San Fernando Valley, like yeah. near, like near Pacoima, um, San Fernando. How far is that from here? About an hour. That's where we came oh. from. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, we came from the valley. Yeah. I've never seen Marty's house because I've seen it's Lorraine's looks, house. It looks exactly the same. I wanted to climb up in the tree and you know be a peeping tom. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen Biff's grandma's house. Dude, that's right. A peeping. He's a peeping tom. That is a perfect movie. A peeping tom. Oh, his doctor's name is Crispin Glover. There yeah, we yeah, go. Yeah, Crispin Glover. I saw him on an interview too. How he says how he, he's like I can make a lot of money going to those signings, but I won't do it. You know, he, yeah. won't, he won't go to conventions for that reason, I guess. Wow. Yeah, and but I. He, but he did the movie Willard with the rats. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
He also had a, you ever see his weird music, a video he did called Clowny Clown Clown? No. Yeah, there's a. Sounds he, good. Oh, dude, it's fucking awful. But I, we played <laughs> on the show one time. We had a band that, like, I guess, because it had, like, he has, like, a weird, like, sub, sub audience. But, uh, I don't know if that's a thing. I just made up sub audience. He has like a you know weird fan base, but because uh, he's he's a, he's a weird guy. Like um, they gave me some examples, but the one that stood out was his uh, song music and the song "Clowny Clown Clown." Clowny Clown Clown Clown. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fucking weird one. You that's know, weird. far far away guy. Like it's really yeah. Art. Yeah. No, you definitely check that out. Uh, you know what I liked was every time I'd go to Oceanic Arts. You know, o- Oceanic Arts is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oceanic Arts was like the supplier of tiki decor for all of the tiki bars for the last, what, 60 years or something like that. But just around the corner from uh, Oceanic Arts was Whittier High School. Mm. And Whittier High School was Hill Valley High School. Yeah. That's just a screenshot from the video. Oh, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work at, uh, when I was in high school, I used to work at yeah. Universe Studios at the Back to Future ride. So every time you had to use a restroom, you have to say, I got to go to Hill Valley. They don't let you say I gotta go. Really? Piss. <laughs> yeah. No way. And you would. So you were you able to walk around like the courthouse and stuff? Yeah. I mean, no. The yeah, you could. No, we never got access to that. No. Oh, okay. But, yeah, but we dressed up as our uniform was Doc Brown with the cowboy shirt and. Oh the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know the um, so there's like that town square at at Universal where yeah. they shot like the courthouse scene and stuff. That was also used in a Twilight Zone episode of the man who, the last man alive or something. Oh, yeah. And Is that the one who broke his glasses? Yeah, I think so. And I think he's like stumbling. He's realizing that no, there's nobody around. And he's stumbling into the town square. And they modeled that first scene of Back to the Future after that. Oh. Because it was the same location. Oh, wow. And it's, you know, it's Marty like tripping over the curb and like Mr. Sandman playing. And yeah. The little girl with like the or a little boy with the, the spring the, shoes. The intro oh, for the, the spring shoes. That's the fucking crazy. Gremlins was also the that little center too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they use that for a lot movie. of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or no, that uh, what, what, what was that? What's that place in Hollywood where that was supposed to be the uh, the school the school dance? Remember, that's in Hollywood. It's like a church in Hollywood. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The the uh, auditorium, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a church in Hollywood. You always, but before you make before you make a turn, like a left on the freeway, you'll see it. It's like oh, across right. from a gas station. So when you go in there, does it look like? I never went in there. I just uh, drove by and it's. I know every year the, they uh, like spot. set up the band. It sucks when you go somewhere and you think it's from the show. Like I went to the Seinfeld, the monks, the restaurant, mm-hmm. and I'm like, it's gonna be like Seinfeld. Like it looks nothing like it in there. I'm like, oh really? <laughs> oh man. I went into Pans and I was like, "This is where Pulp Fiction was filmed." And it's like, no, that was the other one. It was uh, like a different Pans, and they like knocked it down a year. I went before. to the Fight Club house when they were, when they were actually filming the movie because really? my dad used to work in the industry, so he uh, he was part of the, the team that built the house. So I, I, you know, I before I saw the movie, I got to go inside the house. Where was that? This was like somewhere in L.A. Oh, okay. Somewhere in L.A. I think there's pictures somewhere. Yeah, we got to go. The okay, so that's uh, um, uh, exterior, so the front, mm-hmm. the side, and then like in the backyard was all like you know. Mm-hmm. But once you go inside, it was just empty. It was yeah. it's a set. But I was like, oh, I was hoping to see the Fight Club house on the inside. But I'm like, yeah, it's pretty rad. Yeah, but it's like you said, like you said, it's still cool, but not quite. Yeah, totally. Yeah, man, it's cool. So film, so westerns, Vietnam movies. Um, <laughs> Yeah. We're going really off. No, no, it's just fine. It's yeah, just, I'm yeah. getting no spike, you know? Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up now. Oh, okay. Um, I just got two more things for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for those, Quick you mentioned set. how you want uh, new people uh, to find the scene, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what would you recommend to those, for those people who want to build their own uh, tiki bar, some advice, starter advice? Like, Oh, man, I, that's so tough because it's like, where do you start? I guess, you know, I guess you find either a vintage small bar for the corner of your house or, or you build a small bar and then just start paying attention to like the, the music and the cocktails and try to immerse yourself in, in that world, you know, listen to Martin Denny and Esquivel and Les Baxter and I don't know, the Hula uh, Girls. The Hula Girls, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's a good channel. And, and, then, and uh, anything by, um, anything that's on uh, High Tide Recordings also. Oh, High Tide, okay. Yeah. And for those two who want to pursue maybe a channel like yourself, maybe have some reservations or fear to pursue a, a tiki, or not even just a tiki channel, any kind of YouTube content, any advice for them? Oh my God. I like, <laughs> if I felt like I was, if I felt like I was truly succeeding at a channel, I would have all kinds of advice. I think that, I mean, all you can do is grind, you know, just create content and keep putting it out and, you know, try not to bore people. Yeah, I mean, I think that's like I think that's, I think that's the goal of YouTube is don't bore people. 
All right, then. Well, I want to thank you very much. <laughs> we'll end on that. Don't bore people. I want to thank you so much for coming on the channel, sure. Spike. Thanks for coming to the Breezeway. I appreciate that it. Was, that was great. Yeah. Thanks for giving me all these beers. Yeah. I'm fucking wasted. <laughs>